Hello, Mystery Report and Tudor subscribers. This is Terrell from Terrell03.com. Today's November 28th, 2020. I'm doing my best to catch up on making the um, Mystery Reports. This is the first of three where the article's been written, just have not had time to upload them. To give you some idea, this report was written in September about October event. I want to share my views on using hindsight now. And uh, Prophecy versus Mystery, written. Um, Don sent me, he's a Mystery Report supporter, and he sent me questions. His comments about what we were looking at back in September as an October event, if you guys can go back in time and remember that. And um, this newsletter program is about helping people see God's wisdom, hidden in plain sight, using these three witnesses of spirit, water, and blood, testifying in the Holy Scriptures from Genesis 1-1. Through Revelation and whenever this is some of you have not seen this before mystery report programs right here $25 per year you get a copy of my book the mystery explained attached with instructions on how to open it up you want to, to send questions me to be your tutor like with Don's situation here then you click this button it's just 25 extra dollars per year same deal you get a copy of my book the mystery explained and um, you're going to want to Let me find myself on my website. Here we go. Scripture videos. You're going to want to watch these six videos as an introduction before I read my book, The Mystery Explained. It's going to help fix broken doctrine, help you see the differences between the two Gospels, two churches, four baptisms, differences between God, my Father, who art in heaven. Yes, there's a difference. Differences between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus. Big difference. And then how the mystery diagrams work. 80 mystery diagrams are used in the Mystery Explained to help you to see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight. Really, really great program. And I want to get in here. It's going to seem a little bit confusing going through what I wrote back in September, but I'm going to do my best. And um, this is the, the uh, Awakened Radio series. These were sent to me by John. There are 21 of them. They're about an hour each, and the the Black Star reports back from 2012 have been removed, edited, and this is what remains of the reports that I was doing every what was it every Sunday morning. I was making these reports that'll give you more insight into the mystery explained, the three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. These are five links to chats that uh, the original program before COVID started. I never had more times. There were more hours in the day than on Tuesday evenings. We were meeting with the group and they were asking me questions. And um, so you have you can access that information right there. And now to Don. And at, this was back in September 23rd. Whenever he wrote those questions, my apologies again for the uh, missed reports have run behind because of so much other work that I've been having to do. I'm going to try to catch up on this Saturday and get at least one of these reports out. So he had some, um, it's been a bu busy past few weeks. So we're moving through September. This is Don writing to me. And then he had a couple of points he wanted to share. And he was under the impression that uh, with all the UFO sightings, <clears throat> which for me, they are sons from space. They are God's custodians. They are waiting for the Black Star to come through. And then they're going to help Elijah and the restoration of all things start the day of the Lord. So God's custodians, everything is right on schedule. Reports were coming out everywhere about October surprise, October surprise. It looked to me like it was be connected to the war games that started on October the 15th. And then that, that activity came and it dissipated. And then... Uh, Turned out to be a whole lot of nothing. So whether this turned out to be Trump throwing the election, whether, I mean, I'm going to make connections here to the um, release of the mutagen through here. I'm characterizing here. When you get through mystery report, you can go through and read, or you can stop this video if you want to read everything that's being said here. What I'm trying to do is get down to the scriptural part where you want to see God's wisdom hidden in, pl in plain sight. This is more political. This is more what the the October surprise could be. So I'm giving an overview of the 9-11 inside job, the Benghazi attacks, how they use smoke screening and manipulation. 
all setting up for what they're about to do right now. With the mutagen being released, military elements that are going to be used, and um, so their plan is to place military, a militarized police force, National Guard and military elements, between Sheeple and real safe zone locations to ensure destruction of everyone on the surface of the earth using their biological contagion in combination with Black Star Super Plume transforming the planet. That's a long sentence. So their New World Order under the Georgia Guidestones agenda can begin once Black Star leaves the solar system. That's what their plan is. We're, right now we're in the days on November, you know, after Thanksgiving, before Christmas, we're in the days before they release the mutagen. And so this is the quiet. This is the calm before the storm that's coming. We're seeing signs in the news reports of what's coming. Dark winter, that phrase is being used over and over and over again. And people are getting ready to lose their houses. The, uh, the, the a lot of renters that have, been, have not had to make their payments, well, when the building gets... You, nobody makes the payments in the building and the landlord loses the building, then the bank shuts the whole thing down. It looks like the, a lot of that is going to converge with the dark winter that's going to be, well, instituted under Biden. That's what, that's what it looks to me. And it seems to me that Trump's thrown the election. He, he was never on board with me, with the, the wall and, and all the promises. He was going to fix the Fed. And the illegal alien invade, uh, the illegal alien invasion, and it's just gotten worse under Trump. Lots of propaganda being used to try to make people believe that he's a good guy. When to me, he serves the House of Rothschild, just like Clinton, just like Bush, just like Obama, just like everybody before him. Now they're uh, they've wrapped up the Syria, the central bank being installed there. Now it's going to be um, Iran. That's where all the focus is going to be, and it's about the ins installation of that central bank doesn't mean anything else to the House of Rothschild. It's the House of Rothschild that's pulling the strings here. That's the thing to realize. So that's kind of an overview of what I'm sharing up in here. And they're going to be proclaiming peace and safety when their destruction comes. And what they're going to be, they're going to be filling up the FEMA camps, these internment camps, with people, processing people. They're changing the rules now for executions here in the United States. So they go back to old school ways. And uh, these changes taking place because of the refusers that are not going to, that, that it's going to be a gigantic divide in this country, already being polarized. And then the mutagen is going to be released and the whole world's going to change. So then he's curious, and I'm curious about your thoughts on the scriptures where God says that he will judge those who destroy the earth. It seems that their ploys to cover the approach of the Black Star and their agenda to lock down populations is intervening with their escape plans or interfering with their escape plans, and the elites are in fact willing to destroy the earth. Um, if this wasn't the real problem, the scriptures would not reference them. And <clears throat> the deal in a nutshell is that there's a blood witness that's testifying right now out of the Pauline epistles today. And there's a water witness that testifies through the kingdom epistles of the New Testament, testifying about what happens during the day of the Lord. Now you have this testimony whenever John the Baptist, Christ, and the Twelve offered the gospel of the kingdom that was rejected. That's uh, Romans 11 started 7. Some were chosen, Peter, John, and James, Cornelius, some were chosen, the rest were hardened. Pharisees, Sadducees, the lawyers, the scribes, hardened. They did not accept the baptism of John. They did not Except the gospel of the kingdom. Those that accepted it, well, they inherited Peter, John, and James. They've got a place on the sea of glass. The kingdom of priests, the, the show is going to go for them. Matter of fact, when we're raptured and we are put in the places where the heavenly seats, where Satan's people are now, they're going to be chained. And we're going to be put there. Well, Peter, John, and James are going to be raised too. Kingdom bride, they stand on the sea of glass out in front of us. It's all explained in my book, The Mystery Explained, color-coded diagrams. This is the key, that people are mixing the water and blood ministries of Jesus Christ together. They do not put the veil here. This is the first veil. This is the second veil. See first veil? They don't have the veils in the right place in their scripture that's living and active. This is like the veil between the body and the soul. This is the veil between the soul and the spirit of the scriptures. 39 books, 13 books, 13 books. This book right here is the book of Acts. 
It's a veiled book. It has the only book in the Bible. The book of Acts is different than every other book. These are spirit witnesses. These are blood witnesses. These are water witnesses. That's 65. It's 39, 13, and 13. Based on the number 13, the number of the steward. There's a lot of numerology involved. It's all explained in my book, The Mystery Explained. It's like a manual. It's heavy. And lots of diagrams. So I'm giving you a, a brief, brief overview to give you context on what I'm explaining right here. So, yes, the scriptures mention that those who destroy the earth will be destroyed. That goes back to the infinite realm where Adam was destroyed and all the brethren were in on it. Deceived, deluded by Satan. Satan in the infinite realm is the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet here. The same way that the word in the infinite realm is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit here. They all have three witnesses. You have three witnesses. Everybody's got three witnesses. You have a spirit, soul, and a body, but you're not supposed to. It's because the universe is broken. Heaven's heaven and earth. The angels are in the heavens, and we're down here in the earth part. So you have a greater half in the heavens that's rejoined together with you when you obey the gospel. I know it sounds complicated, especially if you've never heard it before. It's extremely simple once you can see it. Okay, so yes, it's mentioned, in, and it's mentioned in Revelation. I'm going to quote the verse here. Just because it's mentioned in the Bible doesn't mean it's happening today. So there's a physical fulfillment of the Antichrist literally incarnating on the earth as a man. That doesn't happen in this mystery time. This, the Lord returning on the clouds, but we return with him. Colossians 1, just start reading and you'll see that whenever he returns, then we will be, when he is revealed, then we will be revealed with him in great glory. So Matthew 24, when it's fulfilled, the Lord's coming, Son of Man coming on the, we come with him. That's at the end of the age. People want to make it happen here, but it happens way over here. The truth says exactly what God's word says without creating a single contradiction. If there's a contradiction, there's a misinterpretation. The earth, the universe, says the same exact things that this God's word says when both are interpreted properly. But you have to have the correct interpretation. And that's what's extremely rare. The correct interpretation. Most everybody, denominationalism, is mixing this water and blood together in different ways when they're supposed to be kept separate. The very few among the nominations put the veil here and separate kingdom doctrine from grace doctrine. The kingdom church from the body of Christ, grace church. This is the kingdom bride. This is the grace body of Christ. Our mystery church that the Old Testament prophets never saw. Our mystery gospel. Our mystery translation to immortality. So many aspects of the mystery were kept secret in God and revealed only through the ministry of the Apostle Paul. And for that reason, many, many religious people, they think that Paul is just of the devil or something because he teaches different than what Christ taught in the four Gospels. Because after Christ was raised from the dead, Christ himself revealed these things to Paul after he was raised on the road to Damascus. So we live under a different set of house rules as the members of Christ's body than the kingdom bride that obeys the gospel of the kingdom. And that gospel of the kingdom has to go to the whole world and then the end shall come. Matthew twenty four fourteen. right? We don't even preach it today. That's what was rejected by Israel. That's what Elijah is going to preach over here during the day of the Lord. We're going to see all of this from heaven and come back with him at the end of the age. Okay, so there's a little more of an overview again to help give the things that I'm saying here more context. So the references that you cited from the book of Revelation, it says, we give, um, we give you thanks, O Lord God, the Almighty, who are and who were, because you have taken your great power and have began to reign. And the nations were enraged and your wrath came. And the time came for the dead to be judged and the time to reward your bondservants, the prophets and the saints and those who fear your name, small and great, and to destroy those who destroy the earth. See, we're doing things already done. And we're doing it for the third time. We did them the first time in the infinite realm, the second time in heaven with Michael the Archangel and the dragon. Now we're here as ambassadors for Christ, in this, then we're doing things for the third time, things that are already done. At the end of the age, those, that's when this prophecy is fulfilled. This is Revelation 11. 
the books are opened up in Revelation 20. This is a retelling of what's, what's retold in the in Revelation. The same events are told over and over and over again from different perspectives. Makes it a lot of symbolism, types. One of the most difficult books in the Bible to get right. You have to understand the rest of the Bible before you can try to come here and get things right. So, yes, this is going to happen, but we're going to be part of the judgment. Members of the Lamb. So when you go to the book of Revelation, you see the lamb that's in the center of the throne? Go to Revelation 7:17. 7, this lamb that's in the center of the throne, we're the members of his body. We've been in his body all the way back from Revelation 1 when that trumpet sounded behind John. That trumpet is the same trumpet from 1 Thessalonians 4:16, 1552. When we put on immortality, we see we're already there in Revelation. Most people try to put our mystery church in the churches of the Bible and of Revelation. The seven churches, we're, we're already in the Lamb. Thing they don't realize. So, let's keep in mind that we are living through the 2,000 year mystery time. That's, that's right here. That the Old Testament and New Testament prophets, other than Paul, were not allowed to see. See, people are talking about how prophecy is being fulfilled today. There has not been a prophecy fulfilled for almost 2,000 years. They say, well, Israel is in the Promised Land. Israel is not in the land between the Nile River and the Euphrates River. They're right there near the Jordan River where Elijah is going to make the river back up, turn into dry land so they can walk across in the promised land. That hasn't happened yet. That's still in the future. So Ezekiel, we go to the, the end of Ezekiel, the last two chapters, see the big kingdom is there. It's not there yet, is it? Well, it has to be there. So David is going to rule from, from Ezekiel 34, start at 22. He's going to rule and feed Israel himself through that period. And then he's going to be made desolate. He's the Messiah from Daniel 9, 27, uh, 24. She's the Messiah, the prince. It's going to be cut off. It's David. He's going to be cut off. And then he's raised again in Ezekiel 37. Start at verse 24. And he's going to, he's going to be there in the new earth while Christ is in heaven. A lot of people want to bring Christ to rule on the earth, and he's not. His kingdom is not even of this realm. That's what he told Pilate, John 18, 36. Because he is the Lord God of the Old Testament. Heaven is his throne. The earth is his footstool. He created a man to be king on the earth. So, yes, those things are going to be fulfilled. They're going to be fulfilled, fulfilled at the end of the age. There's something like that that happens here. But it's the soul part. This is the soul of the Bible, the soul fulfillment. Okay, the literal is going to happen at the end of the age. So the, there's going to be a rapture of the body. So many people don't get the mystery part right. Just about everything that relates to the mystery is gotten wrong by those blinded by denominationalism. The deluding influence forces them to believe what's false. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, start at verse 7. Okay, so we're in moving this period here. We're getting closer and closer to this line when the rapture happens. And we're going to be caught up, taken in the clouds, meet the Lord in the air. And then you're going to find out that we're, well, we're already there. We're living in the infinite realm and in heaven, the highest heaven, almost infinite host, and this realm at the same time. Like you have a spirit, soul, and a body all at the same time. Okay, so then... Um, There, there are parts, the things that are revealed under the mystery topic. Paul uses the term mysterion 20 times. Peter, John, James, Hebrews, they mention it zero times because they're talking about prophecy being fulfilled. We're, in Paul's epistles, the mystery is revealed. That's what the topic of my book is, the mystery explained. And as events ha um, happening remained hidden in God, for revelation after God raised Christ from the dead, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. If the Old Testament prophets could see events of the day, then the devil and his minions would not would have seen also and not crucified the Lord of glory, so that they'd be kept a secret. God's word is laid out using a precise pattern of the tabernacle of Moses in the temple, where the red area, our mystery time, is standing between the two veils hidden from the Old Testament prophets and the Old um in the Old Testament and the New Prophets. The New Testament Prophets too. 
in the coming kingdom dispensation, testifying during the upcoming day of the Lord. The day of the Lord hasn't even started yet, and it's quote unquote as a thousand years. Second Peter chapter three, verse eight, read nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You see, Peter's talking about the end of the age, way over here. Paul's talking about how the day of the Lord starts. There's a period here that's thirty six hundred years as a thousand years, which is a euphemism, Greek, and it means so long as it takes. That's like you saying, boy, that could take a thousand years. You don't mean exactly a thousand years. You mean so long as it takes to get her done, right? That's what the Bible means. That phrase is only used in Revelation and Second Peter. Black star comes here. Black star comes here. Like the black star came in, came in the days of Noah and the days of Moses. It's coming here for the prophet of Acts chapter 3. Start at verse 19. That prophet, okay, whoever doesn't heed his words is going to be utterly destroyed from among the people. Utterly destroyed from among the people. Day of the Lord is going to start. That's Elijah. Come and restore all things. He's going to preach the gospel of the kingdom. We're taken. We're out of here. And then this is the gospel of the kingdom. And when it goes to the whole world, way over here, then these the great tribulation happens. The end of the age. No, we're not there yet. Okay. So, find today on the, on the mystery prophecy, prophecy mystery timeline to realize the diagram was drafted back in 2004. 2005 and that today 2020 uh, we're approaching that first veil the first diagram um, where our mystery church is caught up to meet the Lord in the air before the destruction comes suddenly from 1st Thessalonians 5 that's when the black star gets here the black star is going to leave the world's going to become a giant garden giant kingdom and then it's going to come at the end of the age once the devil has a short time he's going to be incarnate on the earth as a man his Beast's son is the one that's going to come. He's the one that's going to finally overcome the two witnesses at the very end of the age. That's still 3,600 years away. People are trying to make this the end of the age and all 3,000 years where the stuff has to happen in almost an instant. And it's just not going to happen that way. There's not even a temple in Israel to be defiled. And there's not going to be one because the Holy Spirit that occupies the Holy of Holies there is in us. It's not going to be available to go into the Holy of Holies until we're deposited like a letter to the Lord in heaven at the rapture. Then the Holy Spirit is free to come back, meet Elijah, standing on the shores of the Jordan River, and he's going to preach the gospel of the kingdom. And the kingdom's going to come. There will be no more gospel of the grace of God on the earth. All the preachers will be taken. You can't send the preacher if you ain't here. It's going to be a kingdom dispensation that God held in abeyance until he could get the body of Christ. He's about to take us. Okay. So God uses the black star to divide times from times within this evil age that began when the darkness fell. See this, even the forces of this darkness are in Ephesians 6.12. That's the same darkness that fell in Genesis 1.2. That defines this evil, that's the feature and characteristic that defines this evil age, is the darkness that fell. That darkness is going to be chained, right, temporarily, and then released at the end of the age. So there's going to be this kingdom period that comes briefly so that we can do things, guess what, already done before. So that the Messiah... David can be murdered again, like he was as John the Baptist, like he was in the infinite realm as Adam. Things that have already done are going to happen again. The black star is, was used by God to create Noah's flood and the earth changes we see in the days of Moses, where human lifespans were reduced from thousands of years to 120 years and now 70 years. When the day of the Lord starts, then the people are again going to live to be more than a thousand years old. Some of the people that start the day of the Lord with Elijah are going to live to the end of it. Like Elijah. Because he's David. He's not going to be recognized as David until he's, he leads Israel across into the promised land. Then they're going to stack 12 stones on the other side. And then they're going to realize, holy cow, this is David. They're looking at their prophet and their priest, who was John the Baptist, and their king at the same time. Yes, it's for a man to die once in the judgment, Hebrews 9.27. Very aware of that, but the two olive trees from Zechariah chapter 4, start at verse 11. Those two olive trees come again and again and again and again. Adam and Eve, the first and the last. The two witnesses of Revelation 11, Adam and Eve. Look at the powers they have. The same powers of Elijah and Moses. 
Elijah, Adam, Eve, Moses. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? But once you see all the types, God reveals it to you, then you're going to see it like I do, just clear as a bell, and everything's going to make perfect sense. What Scripture says, it's living. The, the Holy Word of God is the only living document on the planet. It is living and it's active. What's in the Pauline epistles is active for you today, if you're a member of Christ's body. The, God has to tap you on the shoulder and say, okay, now you can see my hidden wisdom. Everybody can't see what I'm showing you here. God has to, the time, go look up the Word. It's covered set, line by line in my book, The Mystery Explained. The real definition of Mysterion, because you'll see that it, God is the one that chooses, and he's the one that appoints the time. Not just for Paul to see it, but for Paul to write about it, and not just for you to see it, and read it, and it grow inside of you. So it's each individual goes through this process. It started for me decades ago. It's starting for some of you just now. Some things you can see, some things you still cannot see. That's what maturity is. Faith is the seed. Knowledge is the shoot that comes from that seed. The fruit is the blood witness that comes, and then it has the next generation of seeds. That's the way the system works. That's the way it, this is God's stuff. I can't take credit for any of this stuff. God showed it to me. It's His stuff. And He wants me to show it to you. And if He's chosen you to see it, you'll see it. If not, then you'll see it sometime later in the timeline. And many, many are going to see this in heaven. These things are written on the walls of heaven, on the standards of heaven, on the temple of heaven. And people are going to see it later, but blessed are those who see it in this evil age. That God lets you see it while we're still under the powers of the darkness. Okay, so um, the black star causes the destruction of 1 Thessalonians 5 to start the day of the Lord, and it returns at the end of the age to fulfill the words of the prophet Daniel, Joel, Zechariah, prophecies of Jesus Christ in Matthew 24 and Revelation. Therefore, the judgment from Revelation 20, where those destroying the earth are destroyed, takes place in about 3,600 years. I know that's difficult. That's difficult to try to fathom. So here's wisdom for the mature. First Corinthians 2. Start at 6 and go to 8. Members of Christ's body, look carefully again at the second diagram. We see prophecy spoken, mystery revealed, prophecy fulfilled. To realize you are looking at a man with a spirit and a body and a soul. Turn, the, the, turn it 90 degrees, put in the Old Testament, prophecy spoken on top, and you have the image of a man testifying as God's living and active word. The spirit witness of God's word testifying in the Old Testament with the fulfillment of the upcoming day of the Lord in that reality began with John the Baptist, who Israel and almost nobody today recognizes. Israel rejected the gospel of the kingdom through John the Baptist, spirit, Jesus Christ, blood, and the third strike came with blasphemy of the Holy Spirit when rejecting the gospel of the kingdom from the twelve that began on the day of Pentecost. So many people think that our church began on Pentecost. It did not. That was the third offering of the gospel of the kingdom, the kingdom disciples. That's why you see Peter raising his hand. He says, "All let all the house of Israel know. And yes, there were Gentiles there, but not true Gentiles. There were proselytes. Other than that, there were no Gentiles there. If anybody came in contact with a Gentile, they were unclean and were not fit to be partake in the feast. That's why nobody wanted to go in with Christ to see Pilate. Because if they went into his household, they would be unclean instantly. And they would have to go to the priest. They would not be enough time for them to partake in the Passover if they would have done that. So we are living within a parenthetical mystery time period that prophets never saw and that will end with the rapture of our mystery church that starts the day of the Lord so that the words of the Old Testament prophets can be fulfilled therefore see Christ has to be held by the hand that's what the Greek says held by the hand until all the words of the prophets of old are fulfilled and so that's what this upcoming day of the Lord's about and we're up there in heaven helping Elijah because he's on the earth doing things that are happening in heaven on earth as it is in heaven. All the time God had to restore heaven first because on earth can only be restored after heaven. So the devil's minions have to be chained and we got to be put there. God needs us to fill those heavenly places. That's why he's calling us. Become members of Christ's body to judge the world and the angels because the angels are the greater half of men. 
There's not supposed to be any such thing as angels or men or women. They're only supposed to be living souls that are created by God. Not even supposed to be procreation. In the infinite realm, there's no such thing. Everybody's created. Perfect. Complete. Mature. Done. That's not the way things are here. The, what's happening here is in a broken universe. And people don't realize it. That's why quantum and relativity do not reconcile here. Because this physical universe is like the woman. Heaven is like the seed. The heavens is like the man. You can't define the singularity, what's real, by just the water witness. It's impossible. So if that's all you have in this physical universe is the water witness woman. You have to have the seed and the man and all put back together again. And that in heaven is where quantum and relativity do reconcile. So um, many people are waiting for the Antichrist to appear and set up his abomination of desolation from Matthew 24. But that is a prophetic event seen by the prophets that is fulfilled at the end of the age on the next Black Star Orbit Cycle. Boil everything down. The elite of today are indeed destroying the earth using a spectrum of methods and devices that only mirror the destruction taking place at the end of the age. Like this, this coronavirus, there's nothing compared to what's released at the end of the age. The biological weapon that released at the end of the age would kill every microbe on this planet if the time wasn't shortened. That's what Christ says. At the end of the age, this is a mild version of what we're, what's going to happen at the end of the age, what we're going to see happening. And some of you are thinking this through and you're realizing that the world's full of Satan's sons at the end of the age, but the thing to realize is Satan eats his own. He eats his own sons. That's how delusional the sons of darkness are. They don't even realize that they're going to be in the lake of fire that sums up everything. And the the beast, the, the the false prophet, and the dragon are Satan. And he is devouring his own children. Those that are deceived by them are eaten by him. So what we're going through today, there's escape for us. We're going to be raptured. There is no rapture at the end of the age. The, the, all the sons of darkness that are here, well, they're just here. And they, there's no way for them to escape. Their escape is in death in the lake of fire. So the abomination of desolation is set up inside the sons of disobedience, the sons of darkness today. They don't even realize it. Most of them think they're, think they're serving Christ. I'm not going to name any names, but the people that are pushing modern day um, Christianity, they think that they're saying they're not. They're burning in the lake of fire already. The rapture is going to happen for them. There's an anti-rapture according to the mystery of iniquity, just like there's one for the mystery of Christ. We're going to be realize that we're already seated in those heavenly places. We're already there. Whenever the twinkling of an eye, when everything changes, you're going to realize you're in the middle of a conversation. You have been. It's all going to make perfect sense. But those of us, I shouldn't say us, those that are in, that have been deceived, deluded, they're members of the Antichrist body. They're burning in the lake of fire right now, just like we're seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus as finished products right now. And they wake up in the lake of fire wondering, well, how did this happen? They're saying the same thing Christ said on the cross. Father, Father, why did you forsake me? They're saying the same exact words, not realizing that they're members of the Antichrist body. They've been deluded by the deluding influence, deluded indeed. By God's loading influence, there's nothing they can do to change it. The power that they have now is from far beyond. They can't change it, what's happening. So many people are getting rewards. All right, you see these big giant ministries, they're getting all, they're powerful, they're great influence politically and everything. That's because things are not as they seem. And you'll see how things shake out on the other side. Little chickens like me and the chicken, and the chicken house are big chickens on the other side. And you'll see. Some of you can see it now, very few, but some of you can see it. Those are the ones that I'm able to help. Just like Christ always said, the many are on the wide road to destruction. It's the few that are on the path to life. That's the way that it is. Just a few of you can see it. Okay, so, um, therefore, the coming rapture includes the righteous and the wicked being taken, with the wicked waking up in the lake of fire as they burn even now, while the sons of, of uh, and the children of the day meet the Lord in the air, to be with him forevermore. We have been with him for, since the moment we obeyed the gospel. When we did, we were given a past, present, and future.
by the power of Almighty God, that happened for each of us, the power of God. But it's the gospel that's the power of God. Right? Not his, for, for, not his foresight, vision, or anything like that. The gospel. It's the moment we, ob we obey the gospel. That's the magic. That's what God is showing the heavenly authorities. That his, good, his gospel, his good news, he, that, that uh, his grace and his mercy is more powerful than all the works of men and all the works of angels combined for all the ages. So then he says, take care, thanks uh, for all you're doing. I let others know that you are the only one I feel connected, connects all the dots, puts the puzzle pieces together and um, correctly. And thank you for the kind words, Don. And other people see it too, but you are in the extreme minority. And I'm under more pressure even now as we get closer and closer to us being taken. I'm going to be under more and more pressure. I've fallen behind. I'm embarrassed about it. But I'm really, really sorry but they're, I'm doing my best to help in the best way every single day, using my time the best to help people that are living under this this uh, shroud of darkness that we're living in right now. So um, those with knowledge of how the age ends can see the signs in the mystery events like the soul overshadowing the body. That's the mystery versus prophecy right there. The elite, the wicked, must have their event to create the environment of emergency. That's what's going to happen when they release the mutagen. Okay. So those being destroyed call for lockdown and medical martial law for their own peace and safety. When the elite planned all of this far in advance without realizing their underground cities will become their tombs and that they are already judged and burning in the lake of fire as we speak. So be of good cheer, brother, because soon we will stand together in great glory on the other side of the coming veil, seeing these things fulfilled as being face to face. While today we see things in a mirror dimly moving through this mystery time that the Old Testament prophets were never allowed to see. That's how Paul describes seeing the things of this time compared to prophecy, as in a mirror dimly. The, 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 the characterization is easier to understand when you realize that they didn't have glass mirrors back in Paul's day. They had shine metal. The good piece of metal, they shine it up and it was still distorted like a house of mirrors to today. But that's what people used. And in a mirror dimly, in a mirror dimly still, that's how we compare the prophetic events from the day of the Lord to the mystery events that happen today. They are kind of the same, but they're not exactly the same. So then briefly, I want to uh, try to keep this short. Um, the rapture in the seven seals, rightly dividing the word of truth. This came in from Karen. This was back on October the 1st. And um, the common thread, the common denominator of those of you that I'm trying doing my best to help is to help you to separate the prophecy from the mystery, the blood witness from the water witness. So many that are out there today, the professing Bible experts, the prophecy experts in particular, they're the ones that are taking the water witness part and they're mixing the blood witness together. The uh, different denominations just mix things together in a different way. The non-denominationalism, that's where I'm at. That's the way to go. And um, rightly dividing Scripture into these three parts, into th according to these three dominant dispensations. There are thousands of dispensations in the Bible. From angelic hosts to, to uh, your cherubim, that are guardians, to people on the earth. The six-day people that have special dispensation directly with the Almighty. And then seventh-day people that have dispensation with God through Christ the Lord God of the Old Testament. There are so many different dispensations, it's just unbelievable. These are the three primary right here. And Israel of the flesh, the body of Christ, and the bride of Christ. These are the three primaries. Good news message, gospel of the kingdom. Good news message, gospel of the grace of God, the law and the prophets for Israel of the flesh. This is the same exact pattern as the tabernacle of Moses in the temple. Same exact pattern. The same exact pattern of the word of God that's living. And once you see it, and this again is the diagram that I used above, to help you to see the difference between prophecy, prophecy, unclothed, unfulfilled back here. You actually in the 39 books, you have three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water enfolded together. You need Paul to go back and tell you what has application for us. And then this is the prophecy being fulfilled. Prophecy hasn't been fulfilled today. The mystery is being revealed today. That's fact. 
And this is looking at the prophet like Jeremiah, like Joel. They see very well over here. And so people that are using their testimony, they think that today that that's what's happening, but it's not. The day the Lord's about to start, and then everything they see is going to be fulfilled. And we're going to be, here we are in the Lamb, and here's Peter, John, and James on the Sea of Glass. So in Revelation, these are the ones that stand in front of the throne. They don't realize that if they could see beyond the Lamb, they would see their angelic halves on the other side. Peter, John, and James are not restored yet like we are. They have to go through the marriage supper of the Lamb for that. That's in Revelation 19, start of verse 5. And that happens at the end of every age. Every age. More and more of those that are on this sea of glass are going to join us in the Lamb. And it's only then that they're going to be jealous. When they're standing on the sea of glass, they think they're the big chickens in the chicken house. It's only whenever they join us in Christ they're going to realize that we've been there. That we've been rewarded for ages and ages. The last three that are going to join us in Christ at the end of all the ages, Peter, John, and James. Watch to see if that didn't happen. You were told that during the evil age. Whenever nobody should know that's true. God's using Peter, John, and James and the rest of the twelve. They're the last ones that are going to join us in Christ. They were the ones that God gave to the Son of Man on the earth. The ones that had no faith at all to perform his mission that Adam could not do himself on the cross. He had to give the Holy Spirit over to the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, in order to be able to do that. The incarnation of the Lamb of God on earth, who is the incarnation of heaven in heaven. He's the incarnation of this highest heaven. This is the heaven of Genesis 1.1. This is the heaven of Genesis 1.8. There's a difference. And you... you uh, Read the mystery explained. That's going to be shown to you along the way. There's a breadcrumb trail right, carried right through the book to be able to show you these things so that you can see them. So this is the um, extra little article. And there's a, a top news article. It has to do with New York. It's during court knocking down what's went on there. So this is a newsletter. You can see how far I'm behind. Newsletter number 18. For 2020 and there were five for 2019 all in the Dropbox folder there's a breadcrumb trail left for you when you subscribe to this program now some people are getting a little bit upset with me that I haven't been able to do this weekly as I the original plan was my apologies for that but the breadcrumb trail has been left for everybody that clicks and subscribe to this $25 per year you get access to all the newsletters that are there there's a video for each one breadcrumb trail you read my book, The Mystery Explained, along the way and watch those videos. And my prayer is for you that you're going to see it too. And once you see the three witnesses, it changes everything. You see the three witnesses inside yourself. You see them inside Scripture. And you see them in the world, in everyone around you. From the fish of the sea to the beasts of the field to the birds in the air, all these three witnesses are testifying everywhere. And they're testifying, once you read the Bible, like I have so many times, the New Testament hundreds of times, then you know their testimony and you know who's a spirit witness, who's a water witness, who's a blood witness. And their combined testimony becomes angel song that you can hear coming up from you like a, like it's coming from a spring inside of you. And once that's happening to you, then it's on, everything goes on autopilot. You hear the witnesses of the three, you hear the testimony of the three witnesses. They're all testifying about one another, like the Son testifies for the Holy Spirit and the Father. The Son also testifies for every other blood witness in the Bible. Just like the Father, my Father art in heaven, testifies for every spirit witness, and the Holy Spirit testifies for every water witness in the Bible. And once you see it, uh, throw believing. Believing is a little peep squeak compared to knowing. And knowing by the Word of God, that's live, and it's incarnate inside of you. That's Christ in you, which is New Jerusalem incarnate inside of you. Heaven. It's really, really great. Great thing, once you can see it. My apologies that my time is being taken to the Black Star to help people, right, to wake up as many people as possible from because of what's coming. These ladies can help you identify the, the COVID threat and to, to neutralize that COVID threat. That's what this program right here is about, to get the shield, so that you get the shield, so that you can be accounted among the living whenever we are taken just before the destruction comes, which is going to be a May event. So this is going to be a springtime rapture thingy that happens 
just before the sudden destruction, just before it. But the world's going to be cold. And this COVID thing is going to mutate. The mutagen is going to make it into a monster. And my job is to prepare myself and you physically to the best of my God-given ability and spiritually to the best of my God-given ability. Which means if you want to be numbered among those that are raptured, that means that you never saw death. To the end of the ages, you're going to have an emblem that's on your chest. It's in your, your stones that gives you access to everywhere in heaven. And that people can see, hosts, I should say, can see. And you're going to have this little emblem that you're like Elijah, that you didn't see death. You want to be counted among the living? I do. I want it to be there to the end of the ages. It's a great thing to have. Not all members of Christ's body have it, and I want it. But the only way to have it is to be there counted among the living whenever the rapture happens. So if I get wiped out, you know, I'm sick, I'm about to be 63 years old. I get wiped out by COVID. I'm not there, and I want to be there. Really, really do. So there's a purpose to everything that you see on this website to prepare you physically and spiritually to the best of my God-given ability in running the race to win. All right? That's why I'm sitting in the Ozarks in the survival group. I'm not even going to be here for the survival group, but they're going to have all my survival stuff. They're going to have my survival trailer. They're going to have my survival guns and ammo and all my water purification stuff, the tents and everything that I put together knowing full well that I'm going to be taking. But that's helping those that we leave behind. Now, you want to stand in front of God and you want to jump up and down and say, well, I saw it coming, Lord. I saw it coming. Well, where's your works? Where is it? You can't help others if you're sitting on your tail on the coast, right? Say, well, I'm going to be raptured. Okay, well, I'm running the race to win and you're making my job easier, right? So a little smile with that in these gloomy times. But my eyes are fixed on the things above where Christ is, the right hand of God, Colossians 1. Uh, Colossians 3, start at 1. And then down to verse 4, it says, I'm coming back with him in glory. I know I am, for a fact. Many of you don't realize that. You think that you're going to be waiting for him to come in the clouds and you're looking up at him. That is not how it shakes out. So I'm trying to help you take the water witness part. Realize that's kingdom. Separate that from this blood part. That's for you. That's Pauline. Paul, Apostle Paul, is the steward of the dispensation of God's grace. Just like Moses is the steward over Israel and Mosaic law. Um, Peter steward over the early reigns bride that Christ left him the keys to whenever he ascended. And then Elijah is going to pick that up at the end of the age. So there's an early reigns and a late reigns bride. James 5, 7. Early reigns, Peter. Late reigns, Elijah. I'm giving you the snapshot of exactly where we are right now just before the rapture happens. So that's what I have to share with you today for this uh, this uh, report, this mystery report that's right here. So that link is going to be put, the link to this video is going to be put right here. And newsletter 18 is going to go up to the description box. And newsletter number 19 is already, I've already written that. And, and number 20 is going to be written. So before the end of the year, there are going to be 20 of these newsletters in that Dropbox folder. And then everybody that subscribes, you're going to get these. And then I'm going to put these all in the 2021 Dropbox folder for those of you that come behind, leaving you guys a breadcrumb trail. So when you first start off with this, then you're going to have to go back to newsletter number one and start off. And you're going to get the foundation built so that these things that I'm saying in newsletter number 18 make more sense. So for those of you that are trying to understand 18, you're going, what is this? The hell is this guy talking about? It's because you haven't gone through the steps and you haven't been reading my book, The Mystery Explained, to have the foundation built to understand what all this, these things means. So this is the work from the mystery report to help you to see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight. Appreciate your support very, very much. Get more information right here at the website, especially down here in the scripture section. And I uh, appreciate your support. And if you want to avoid all of this, you don't want to subscribe and get my book, then guess what? There's a way for you to do that. You come right down here and you make a donation of just $10. And then I'm going to send you the ebook version. See, $10 or more. I'm going to send you the ebook version, instructions on how to open the book. And then you can do all this on the side. Appreciate your support again. Get more information here at the website. And you'll see you on the next update report.